Okay, hi everybody, it's Kate Luella, how are you going? So today I want to do a very quick demonstration of how to use Gliffy, a free mind mapping tool you can get online. I got it free by downloading it through Google Chrome and I use the Chrome uh, you know, browser for the internet so you can get an add-on for that and that's what I did. But otherwise I think if you're on a Mac or, or if you're not on Chrome, you can pay might be $10 a year or something. There's a lot of uh, really good mind mapping tools out there, but this is the one I really am in love with at the moment. And I understand they all got their pros and cons, but today I'm just gonna talk to you about Gliffy and show you how easy it is to use. So when you first log in, uh, the first thing it'll say up here, untitled. So you just, you can, well, until you hit control S and then it changes, you can save it as you want. Then to start, you literally, I just, most of the time, 95% of the time, I'm just using these the basic shapes, but you can choose more quirky and arrows, things like that from flowchart. Down here there's different things and the bottom one is images. I think you can actually add an image from your PC and then floor plan if you want to do a house maybe, you want to you know, show an office layout, Look, I'm not sure, but they're all sort of things you can easily use as well. I'm going to just drag them over. If you don't want it, just click on it and hit delete. So basically when I create a mind map, mine are all pretty similar. I drag over a box and it's going to remember the color that the most recent box you created was. Alternatively, you can click up here and choose a theme and then it's going to change everything accordingly. But I usually do that last. I don't do that when I start out. To change the color, you click on it once and you hit the box one and then you hit the color that you want to change it to. And that's it. If you want to write something inside the box, there's two ways you can do it. If it's like a heading box and you just want everything centered, click on it once and hit A for the text and then put um, main box. And then you might make it uh, quite big text because it's a heading. You might even make it bold. There's only a few fonts down here. So I just leave it Arial and that's it, main box. And that means that when you move it, it's always going to move like that. On the other hand, if you create a box and then you want to write text in it and move things around a bit more flexible, click on the text thing and then click here once and then type what it is. So main and then I'll put box and you can hit OK. Now what happens is if I don't hit back here and I if I've done that and then I keep clicking around, what happens is it keeps opening this box up. So once you've finished creating text, click over here once and now you'll be able to move this around. If this, um, you can send it to the front, send it to the back. So if I say send to front, it's gonna cover it. So now I'll say send to back. This, you're copying, you can hold control C and copy both, All right? Or you could just copy the box. So just unclick and just click the box. Control C, Control V. Um, you can make them bigger once you've got them. All right. And you can, as I said before, you can change the colors again. And um, this one was saved together. So when I move this one, it's going to all readjust accordingly. So you might say, hang on, I want to change the text. So go back in and change the text. Okay. Uh, so let's say, for instance, you don't want it anymore. You just click on it once and hit delete. All right. So to drag out a shape, you just drag it and drop, make it big. And then I might say send this to the back because I want these two boxes on the front. Like so. I might say, hang on a minute. I want this bo box much bigger. And then I can manually move this. And so I might put some writing up here. So control C. I might say I want to put this here. And now remember once I'm clicked on it, I can edit it, type here. And I might, if you make the size smaller, it makes it all smaller. That didn't work, did it? Maybe it was 36. Um, we'll go back to 24. There we go. And color is here. Okay. Drag and drop. So that's about it. Um, to save it, you just hit Control S and there I've just typed in testing one and that's now what it is. So when you go back into Gliffy, you can open that up again, testing one or whatever you've saved and it will be saved to your hard drive. It's not saved to their uh, site. And I, you can export it. Actually, you know what? I've never exported it. What I do is I use 
this and I actually screenshot mine. Aren't I lazy? But there is probably a way to export. Let's go files. There you go. Save as ping. Save as JPEG. Okay. There you go. So um, it is as simple as that. If you want to save this as a new, um, a, a, you know, Gliffy and then edit it according, you just hit save as. Make sure you save your old one first. And remember these color boxes I did? And so now it just changes all those boxes up. You know, there's only a few choices though. And I just generally do my own colors. But if you want a quick fix, if you just want instant impact and you don't want to muck around, that's the way to go. Um, and then if I'm using arrows, you know, I'm going to say, you know, step one, step two, and so on. Anyway, that's all I wanted to show you today. That's very basic and simple for, for, for doing mind maps. And uh, I do my goal setting on mind maps. And I also set out product funnels how it's going to flow and things like that with uh, mind maps. So I hope that's helped you. I'm Kate Luella from optinandgrow.com and thanks for watching.